Before I tell you what this brand new CSS feature is and how it works, let me first get into what problem this new CSS feature solves. So if we look at my application here, I've just done a basic kind of create React app here and I render out these three different cards within my viewport. And if we go look at the code here, what you're going to see is within app.js here, I render out these three different card components. And these card components are going to have this CSS class of card. And I'm setting them to a width of 80 viewport width. So it should take up about 80% of my viewport here. So if I go back to the page here, you see as I kind of resize this here, it stays at about 80 of the viewport. Now, this, this looks great and all. It looks like it's nice and responsive and that it works well. However, what would happen here if I tried to render these cards out within like a sidebar here as within React and within a lot of different front end frameworks, the idea is that you can create these like small reusable components and then reuse them throughout your application. So what if I had a sidebar here and I wanted to render these within a sidebar? Well, let's uh, go back to my code editor and I actually do have this kind of sidebar component here and this sidebar component, it renders out three different cards within it. So within app.js, instead of just rendering these three different cards, I'm going to render my sidebar, which has this aside container and a class name sidebar that's going to affix this element to the left side of my application, which you'll see in a second. So let's kind of just render this out instead of my three different cards. So let's go ahead and do sidebar and render that out. Now, if I go back to my application and I refresh it here, what you are going to see now, once this fully loads, unless I broke something in my app, which, you know, I've done from time to time. So now we can see, so I have a sidebar and I have set the border of my sidebar. But if you see my cards here, they're still based on the width of my viewport. So my cards they overflow my sidebar. And this is most likely not what you want. This looks kind of disgusting, right? And the reason this is happening is because these cards, the styles of them, they are based on my viewport width. They aren't based on the width of the container element. So you can see this kind of clear problem that we're running into here. And this is where this new CSS feature comes in. So this feature is container queries. So looking at the Mozilla Developer Network docs, container queries enable you to apply styles to an element based on the size of the element's container. If, for example, a container has less space available in the surrounding context, you can hide certain elements or use smaller fonts. There are an alternative to media queries which apply styles to elements based on viewport size or other device characteristics. So these container queries, they allow you to say, okay, if the container of this component or this element is this small, then maybe stack my cards. But if it's, you know, larger than a certain amount of pixels, then you can show my cards in a, just in a row. So you can adjust styles based on the container's width rather than just basing your styles based on the viewport width. So this is a big kind of value add of container queries. And hopefully that example showed you the value of styling based on the container and not just the viewport width. So how do these kind of work and how can we now change my cards to be styled off of just the container rather than the viewport width. So ideally I can add styles here that will allow this kind of card component to still look good, whether it's rendered within my sidebar or whether it's rendered within just my main app. So the way that you can use these container queries is you can set a different kind of container type property to the overall element that you want to be your container. 
So if I want my sidebar to be my, my container, I could set a container type property within my CSS of either sized, inline size, or normal. So the size property will be the query will be based on the inline and block dimensions of the container. For inline size, it will be the query will be based on the inline dimensions of the container. And for normal, it will be the element is not a query container for any container size queries, but remains a query container for container style queries. So you can set the container type of a certain container element to either size, inline size, or normal. All right. And then with your kind of container query, you can use it like this. You can do at container, and then you can set the kind of like so very similar to what you do with a media query, some condition for your styles. So here they say min width is 700 pixels, and then they apply styles to their card. So if the container is larger than 700 pixels, then this will be applied. Okay, so for your container element, you can set a container type, and then you can just use this at container and use a condition to basically use it very similar to how you would use a media query, but it's based on your container size, not on your kind of viewport size. And you can also give your containers a name. So if this post class is the container here, then it's setting a container type to inline size, and then you can also name it. So container name is sidebar. And there's also a shorthand for this. So you could do container colon sidebar forward slash inline size. So this is saying my post element is going to be a container with a name of sidebar and a type of inline size. And then there's also different length units that you can use for a container. So you can use CQW, which is the one CQW is the equivalent of 1% of a query container's width. So, you know, 80 CQW would be 80% of my container query's width. And then CQH would be 1% of a query container's height. CQI is 1% of the inline size. CQB is of the block size. And then CQ min is the smaller value of either CQI or CQB. And CQ max is the larger value of CQI and CQB. So you also have these different units within your kind of container queries that you can use as well. So let's let's go ahead here that gives you an overview of how these work so let's go ahead here and now change my css to make this work so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to copy container type and container name here and we're going to go back to my css and i'm going to go ahead and make my sidebar here i'm going to make it a container so here i'm going to do container type and i'm just going to use size here and then not side size and then container name i'm i'm going to actually name this card cuz it's going to contain my card and i'm going to actually set this on my sidebar and on my app so this should work for both my overall app and when my card is rendered within my sidebar and i'm getting these yellow squigglies here because it's saying it's an unknown property because this feature is so new, my code editor doesn't even recognize, and I could probably update my code editor and it might fix this issue, um, but it doesn't even recognize it because it's such a new property here. Okay, so this sets up my containers here, but now I need to set up my container query. So if I go back here, I'm gonna copy this at container, and we're going to head back here. And then since I named my container name of card, I'm going to place at container and I'm going to say card. And this is going to be a little bit hacky. I'm just going to use a min width of zero pixels. So this always shows. Um, you could, of course, set a different condition here and use this differently. This is just for the sake of example purposes. But I'm going to set my card. And instead of 80 viewport width, I'm going to set it to 80 and then what is it container 
query width. So C Q W. I think that that is correct, but I'll have to go back and double check. So CQW, if I look back here, and yeah, I don't have all these memorized here at this point, as this is definitely a new feature. Yes, CQW, that is 1% of the query container's width. Okay. So this should set my cards to now be 80% of my containers rather than 80% of the viewport. So if I go back to my app here, you should now see my cards are 80% width of my sidebar container here, which, you know, this doesn't look perfect here, but as you can see, it already sizes this much better than what it was before. And now let's go back to my app here. And instead of rendering a sidebar, let's go ahead and just render my three different cards again within my app. So not within a sidebar. And let's see how these end up looking here. So if I do that, and if I refresh my page here, what you can see, and I actually didn't need a refresh because of hot reloading, but what you're gonna see here once this does finish loading is that now my cards are also 80% of my containing width. So this is a way to base your styles based on your container size rather than just the viewport size. This doesn't mean that you shouldn't use media queries at all, but this definitely can come in handy for some of the reasons that you see here. Now, one other thing to show you is where this is usable. So let's go to caniuse.com and see where you can actually use this. So here, if we look up container queries at caniuse.com, what you are going to see is that they are partially supported in Chrome and Edge. They are not supported in Safari or Firefox. And then it looks like a little bit for Chrome for Android, a little bit for Android for browser. So you can see they are not fully supported yet across the board, but since they are getting partial support in Chrome and other things, I definitely think that it's coming for everywhere else. So before you go and use this everywhere, make sure you're using can I use to see where these are allowed and making sure that that also fits your application. But Hopefully this gives you a good idea of how container queries work, what problem they solve, and how they're useful. Thanks for tuning in to this. I'll see you in that next one.